Hi, everybody. This is Jimmy DeYoung, and as I sit here in our temporary studios in the city of Jerusalem, actually on the Mount of Olives overlooking the Temple Mount and the location where Jesus Christ will rule and reign, I am reflecting on where I was this last weekend in Petra, one of the most unique cities in all the world, in fact, one of the seven wonders of the world. Well, we're glad to have you along on Prophecy Today video. want to encourage you also to go to our website, prophecytoday.com. There you can hear audio reports done by our correspondents around the world. For example, this last week, I talked with Colonel Bob McGinnis in Washington, D.C. I spoke with Bob about a potpourri of geopolitical activities that are unfolding and how unique they are as they set the stage for Bible prophecy. Dr. Rob Congdon, he gives us our European Union update, and we keep focusing on that part of the world because the European Union, I believe, is at least the infrastructure for the revived Roman Empire. Rob agrees with me, and we want to keep you up to date as to how that is progressing. David Dolan comes to these microphones, and we talk about our Middle East news update. Well, this is to keep you informed of world activities, current events that, in the light of Bible prophecy, are setting the stage for the next events to unfold found in God's prophetic word. But as I said this last weekend, I was in Petra, located in southern Jordan. Petra has a great historic significance as well as a prophetic significance. Let me take a moment with you and let's look at Petra, past, present, and prophetic. In the past, it's the location where God sent Esau, whose name was changed to Edom. In the 36th chapter of the book of Genesis, God has to separate the two brothers, Jacob and Esau, because each of them had been so prosperous they could not stay in the land of Canaan. Chapter 37, verse 1, God allows Jacob to stay in what we know today as Israel, and he sends Esau, or Edom, to a place called Mount Seir. Now, that's the fifth of the five mountain ranges that extend through the Rift Valley from the north of Israel, which would be the mountains of Mount Hermon. Then you have the Golden Heights, the mountains of Gilead, the mountains of Moab, and it was Mount Seir in that fifth mountain range leading down to the Red Sea until Esau arrived with his family, and then God changed the name of that location to Edom. Edomites were terrorists, basically, at that time. The King's Highway, Numbers chapter 20, verses 14 and following, tell how the Jewish people traveled along the King's Highway. It was the merchant's route, the merchant's route for those who would come out of Africa on their way over to Mecca and the area of the Persian Gulf. When Moses led the children of Israel along that King's Highway, right in front of Petra, the Edomites would not allow the Jews to pass that way, so they had to go back towards the Red Sea, over towards Arabia, and then into the area where they crossed over into the Promised Land, right adjacent to Jericho. The Edomites were very proud according to the book of Obadiah, and in the first six verses of Obadiah, it talks about their pride, which would ultimately bring them down. They were defeated by a group of stone carvers out of Arabia, and they were the Nebataeans, and as they sat at a banquet with the Edomites, Obadiah verse 7, they rose up and they started to kill the Edomites. Many of them escaped. They went west across the Jordan Valley into southern Judah and became the Idumeans. By the way, Herod the Great was one of those Idumeans, a descendant of Esau. In the present, I mentioned at the beginning of our time together, Petra is one of the seven wonders of the world. Millions of visitors come each year to this location. And in fact, thousands of Jews have come since the signing of the Jordanian-Israeli Peace Treaty back in 1994. In fact, I was on the street talking with Jewish people after the signing of that peace treaty right here in Jerusalem. I asked them the significance of the signing of a peace treaty with Jordan. And 95% of the Jewish people that I talked with responded with the answer, now we can go to Petra. Now that's unique in light of Petra and prophecy. This is going to be a location that God has prepared to protect the Jewish people. Before I tell you about that, though, let me tell you that if you trace the Edomites, that would be Esau, his grandson Amalek, 
And then the Agagites, Haman of the book of Esther was an Agagite. You can trace all the way to Herod the Great, who was also a descendant of Esau. And each of these men wanted to kill the Jewish people. Haman in Esther thought he had it all set when they signed the laws of the Medes and the Persians to wipe out every Jew on the face of the earth. And had it not been for such a time as that, that Esther had come into the kingdom, that would indeed have been the case. Well, let me just conclude that thought by saying that the Edomites of biblical times are the Palestinian people of today. The book of Obadiah says at one time in history, they will be as if they have never been. That time in history will be when Jesus Christ returns to the earth, when the Jewish people will be the flame, the Edomites, the descendants of Esau, the stubble, and the Bible says they will be as if they never were as Sodom and Gomorrah. That's Jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 18. So the inhabitants of Petra, where we visited this last weekend, are those people that ultimately will be totally destroyed. But until that time, Malachi chapter 1 and Ezekiel 35 both say that the Edomites will continue to be the thorn in the flesh, the ones that he will have indignation against forever throughout all generations. They will rise up and kill the Jewish people, ultimately their brothers, and take their land. God will bring judgment upon them. But let me get back now to Petra. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6 says, God has prepared a special place to protect the Jewish people in the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. And the location of Petra, located in southern Jordan today, one of the seven wonders of the world, fits all the descriptions found in God's word of that place prepared by God to protect about four million Jewish people during the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. Isaiah chapter 63 verses 1 and 2 talks about who is that coming from Basra. That's the entrance of modern day Petra. It's known as Wadi Musa today. Who's that coming from Basra from Edom having walked through a valley of blood? By the way, that valley of blood talked about in Revelation chapter 14 verses 19 and 20 When the battle of Armageddon takes place, the blood will flow as high as the horse's bridle for 176 miles. That's what the Bible tells us, Revelation chapter 14, verses 19 and 20. And if you will study geography, you'll know from Megiddo in the Jezreel Valley to the entrance of Petra, 176 miles. Jesus Christ will go there, gather up the Jewish people protected in the last three and a half years, and bring them into Jerusalem, where he will set up his kingdom and rule and reign forever. Well, it indeed was a unique experience to be in Petra. Think about Petra past, present, and prophetically. We'd love to have you come along and go with us sometime to Petra. We'll study the Word of God with you there and understand better the historic background and the prophetic significance of this very interesting place. By the way, before all this trouble starts for the Jewish people, the rapture of the church takes place. And in light of everything we talk about on this program, on our website, and wherever we are preaching around the world, I do believe that the rapture could happen at any moment. And having said that, there's nothing left for me to say except let's keep looking up until... 